So today I am going to talk about nonlinear growth and the logistic map. So as we see that uh, if something is growing nonlinearly, means nonlinearly means uh, means something is growing and then its population keep on decaying. So for example, let us take an example of growth of population of insects. That's the best example. So example is growth. of population of insects sometimes the population of insects will be very large and then it suddenly decays and then again grows it's like that so for example let us say let n not be the number of insects in the beginning beginning and let n1 be the number of insects live in the next next generation and imagine that let us imagine that uh, insect population in the current generation and depends on population in the preceding generation and that means n i plus 1 is f n i function of f n i so that means this model which we have designed here it is known as uh, growth equation this model which we have considered here it is known as growth equation and if growth is non linear then we call it as non linear growth and equation governing this is known as logistic map means equation governing non linear or the equation or model governing non linear growth is known as logistic map so let us understand it with the help of an example select so r be some fixed number and let n i plus 1 is equal to r n i then this equation is known as logistic map and r play a very key role for example let n not is equal to 10 initial population is 10 and let r is equal to 2.0 and if i do it then n1 will be equal to 2.0 into 1 10 it is 20 similarly n2 will be 2.0 into 20 it will be 40 n3 is equal to 2.0 into 40 it will be equal to 80 and n4 is equal to 2.0 it's uh, 40 and say it is 
80 it is 160 and n5 will be equal to 2.0 into 160 it is equal to 320 so that means the population is growing exponentially so this represents exponential growth right means population increases but let us take another example for that let us assume that population initial population will be and not will be 48 and say r is equal to 0 0.5 then p1 comes out to be 0 0.5 into 48 it is 24 and then p2 will be equal to 0 0.5 into 24 it will be equal to 12 and then p3 will be equal to 0 0.5 into 12 it will be equal to 6 and then p4 is equal to 0 0.5 into 6 it will be equal to 3 so that means the population keep on decreasing yeah, the population is decreasing and let us take another example say r is equal to 1.0 and n0 is equal to 48 then n1 is again 48 n2 will again 48 and so on means the population will remain the constant population is a constant so that means this factor r is it plays a very important role right and this is known as growth parameter this r is known as growth parameter so here we have taken a very simple example that population is growing or decaying but if we take another example because we have to take a little because it's a very simple example so let us take a another example because population of let us assume that population of insect is growing right means the value of growth parameter r is always greater than 1 that's the meaning of it and another thing which we have to keep in mind when the population will become very large population becomes very large then there is a possibility of food scarcity so if food scarcity is there then insects may die due to food scarcity right that's what will happen so that means we have to keep in mind these all the things and as i know in the beginning that ni plus 1 is proportional to ni or we call it as ni plus 1 is equal to r prime ni and this part can also be written like this delta ni over delta t is equal to r prime ni these both representation are identical but the population starts decrease due to food scarcity and if it is happening then growth rate may change and growth rate r prime which may be is equal to r into n star minus n i n star is the maximum population and after that their number starts decreasing right that's what we have to keep in mind so therefore delta n i over delta t is equal to r prime n i and the value of r prime will be because we have to include the parameter of food scarcity into it and if I put this parameter into this equation then it will become n star minus n i into n i so that's what we are getting here 
and this equation is known as logistic map for the given problem this is known as logistic map of the given problem or population growth logistic map right so let us do little more algebra so if i do little more algebra then i can write down delta n i over delta t it is equal to n i plus 1 minus n i divided by delta t it must be equal to r n star minus n i into n i so from here i can write down n i plus 1 minus n i is equal to r delta t n star minus n i into n i so n i plus 1 is equal to n i plus r delta t n star minus n i into n i let us take n i common then inside it it will be 1 plus r delta t n star minus n i and here n i 1 minus r delta t n star minus 1 mm, sorry r delta t n i is there and let us take it common if i take this factor common then it is 1 plus r delta t n star and inside it here it will be 1 minus r delta t over 1 plus r delta t n star into n i that's what we are getting here so it is n i plus 1 and let us define new is a new parameter as 1 plus r delta t n star and let us call it as x i r delta t over 1 plus r delta t n star into n i it is x right so it is equal to r delta t over mu n i and let us call it nearly equal to n i over n star n i over n star so therefore i can write down our equation as n i plus 1 is equal to mu n i 1 minus x i then dividing by n star so if we divide it by n star then n i plus 1 over n star is equal to mu n i over n star 1 minus x i and let us call this as x i and it is x i plus 1 so i can write down xi plus 1 is equal to mu xi and 1 minus xi so we have simply modified this so it is the simplified equation of our problem right so it is the logistic map so we have modified our equation so what we do we will start with the xi is equal to because x i is a fractional number it is lying between 0 and 1 so let us call x i as means we are starting with the x not x i is equal to x not and uh, this is for the first generation and let us call its value will be 9 and let us take different set of values of mu mu is equal to 2.8 3.3 3.5 and 3.8 these are the four set of values we will take and uh, we will see that what will happen to next generation how their population will change so this is the first example here i have taken this mu as 2.8 this is the initial population and then i apply the formula same formula that mu sorry 
एक्स आई प्लस वन इज इक्वल टू हेयर एक्स आई प्लस वन इज इक्वल टू म्यू एक्स आई वन माइनस एक्स आई दिस इज द फॉर्मूला विच वी हैव यूज राइट and if i do little algebra i will get that up to 30 generations and then i plot it so initially the population is varying and then it will become constant for this parameter and then i have yeah, i have plotted this using the excel right then i go to the next i have changed the mu from 2.8 to 3.3 and then do little so initially the population tries to get constant but even then it again fluctuates and then it again varies and then again right so that's what will happen here for 3.3 and uh, for 3.5 the population will varies like this right it keep on varying and there is another uh, for the 3.8 that's what will happen to the population here for the 3.8 right and let us compare all those results now see this is for 2.8 means the equation which we have used that xi plus 1 is equal to mu xi 1 minus xi and the values of mu have we have written here and xi with which we have started it is 0.9 and that's what will and here there is a chaotic regime this this is known as chaotic regime because it varies very drastically right so it is known as the chaotic regime so that means uh, today's lecture i talked about that uh, non linear growth and how to model that non linear growth and uh, how growth parameter affects our results right so that's all for uh, this lecture